I'm Robert Sawyer. And I'm Mrs. Sawyer. And together we are the only, only black, black kids, kids in, in the, the class. class. We just had an amazing homeroom. Probably the best homeroom we've ever had. Probably. Incredible. Energy through the roof. I was yep. just excited to get into these stories. Yes. And didn't hit record on the audio. Yeah. Bummer. So we, we have we have the video, but I've tried that before. It sounds so terrible. It would, we would sound so far back. So unfortunately, that's lost to the universe. But we're here now. We're here. And that's what we're focusing on. Let me just, let me just make sure <laughs> we are here now. <laughs> so that's what we're going to focus on. How you doing? I'm doing great, my love. Should I retell the story? You can. You know. So it will be the same. We yeah, we never try to do it again. Yeah, we so, just because, do things naturally. Yeah. So now it's like I want to hit all the same points. I don't know the points. I don't. We know don't have scripts. to hit all the points. We can like talk about it. Though. I'm so enthused. I think you can have the same energy just to talk I'm about so it. Enthused. I know. Mm, sorry. Wah, 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 wah. Yep. Such is life. Such is life. All it's, right. It's about how you pivot. You may have heard. <laughs> <laughs> All the things you didn't hear before. Now, here we go. You may have recently heard, as in 25 minutes ago, that over the last week, I have had about eight, I think eight or nine people who have told me that they are listening to the podcast. But these are people I'm talking to in Zoom calls. Um, like I'm talking to these people IRL in real life. In and real it's been life. very interesting. <laughs> This has culminated in last night. We went to see Shits and Gigs Live. They came to Fort Lauderdale. Yes. Great show. Amazing, amazing show. Amazing show. Energy, energy was. It was so good. It was so from good. From beginning to end. Great show. Highly recommend. Yes. Um, I didn't know what they were going to do, but it was so engaging. It was wonderful. I'm ready to go again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really am. Like, if they come again, I'm going to go. We're going to go again. Awesome. Yeah. Before the show, the vibe of the people was just great. It was great. That great day. energy. Yes, great just energy. Great. great vibe. And then we're sitting there, and these two women come up to Mrs. Sawyer, and they say, excuse me, is this you? No, no, no. And no, they're, no. no, that's not how they did it. She says, oh, I normally don't do this. I thought she was going to ask me for something, right? I'm, like, looking because we didn't have anything to eat or drink. But is this you? And she shows like Instagram and it was us. <laughs> it was us. It was us. And then they go, holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, excellent. <laughs> I knew this would happen. I designed it this way. I was so caught off guard. Um, I don't know if they listen to us on YouTube where they're only on I mean, Instagram. Obviously, they listen to us on everything. Keep going. Um, but if they were, I, I was so caught off guard. Like, I would have loved to take a picture and ask them questions. And like, you know, I do. I love feedback. Like, I, I really like I'm the one who always does a survey because I love to get feedback. Um, so um, shout out to them uh, for having the courage to come and say something to a stranger, especially a crazy one like me, because I'm I'm not always as welcoming. <laughs> but I would love um, I, I would love to you know give them their little shout out. I don't know their name, so that's why I feel bad. Yeah, they were gone so quickly. they left so fast, and so I I just you know I wanted to acknowledge them that I appreciate it. They really made my night. I have to admit to that one. I told you so. I know you did. You've done so for years. <laughs> I have told you. So in the previously unrecorded episode, I that was but that was so genuine. I don't know. <sighs> I was speaking from the heart. Let me speak from the heart yet again. I knew that when I set up this podcast, my whole idea for this podcast to get everything going was to put the camera on you. You are wise, intelligent. You have wonderful takes, wonderful perspectives, effortlessly, effortlessly beautiful. Aww. I knew that if we put the camera on you, people would radiate and be attracted to your energy. You're and so now sweet, it's babe. happening. You're I so knew sweet. it was going to happen. 
and now it's happening. You're such a great guy. I told you. You did. I told you. I had to admit, you did. And I will I will repeat this from the previously uh, lost audio. Everybody wants to be Batman. <laughs> She's laughing because she just heard this like, <laughs> like 10 minutes ago. Everybody wants to be Batman. But Alfred lives in a mansion. Alfred is a billionaire. Mm-hmm. And Alfred isn't fighting maniacs in the streets at night, getting hit, punched, shot at, and all that. Alfred sleeps good. Yeah. I mean, he's got to check, you know, you got to like take the calls. Yeah, do all some stuff. But, but yeah. like, Alfred, Alfred has all the benefits of Bruce Wayne, none of the trauma. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not the crazy trauma that makes him put on an outfit every night. Correct. I love being your Alfred. So that means I'm Batman? I mean, don't. Don't tell everybody. But oh, no. I don't want to be Batman. Secrets I don't want to fight maniacs. I don't deal with maniacs. No, thank you. Remove that. I'm not Batman. The other announcement that we made was, I believe you said 2032, Mrs. Sawyer. You're running? Running for what? You said Because you said something about president. Oh, no. I'm, I'm not being president. I can't be no president. No, never. Though never, wh- ever, okay. ever, 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 ever. While the people, nope. while the people are here for you, they would love to see me as the first gentleman. No, well, they're gonna get. They would the love to see hurt. me as the first. That sir. is never happening. I can pull it off. You could. You totally could, but that's never gonna happen. You know what? We can do so for Halloween. What do you mean for Halloween? We can dress up as the president and. First, sir. First, sir. That's not happening. That's always right. It's first gentleman. I don't know what it is. First, sir. We we might find out sooner or later. But no, that that's never. I'm I'm never running. Another announcement that we made was August eighth. We are doing a live streaming episode. So my goal is to do it on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok simultaneously. However, I don't know how to do this. So <laughs> I've got from now till then to figure to it figure out. It out. I, I have an idea. If you know how to do it, please send that information. Ask the black kids at gmail.com. Uh, hopefully, I, I think I'll put something together. Plan to start at 830. Thank you. Plan to start at 830. Probably going to be some technical difficulties. Yeah, so my clock sounds better. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say 830. I got to eat dinner. Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to say I'm going to say 830. And we're going to have, we're going to read some stories. We're going to read some toxic confessions. And we are going to have OBK Court. Taking them to OBK Court. Court. So we're going to have a case or two. You're going to be the prosecutor. I'm going to be the defense. And the classmates are going to be judge and jury. We might have to switch, though, because I think I'm a good prosecutor, but I also think I'm a good defense. I'm actually like a district attorney. Okay. Um... On Law and Order, SBU. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm pretty good there. You know, I, I got a few cases that we're gonna mm-hmm. present. I don't. I don't know the case we're gonna use. I, I've okay. done over. If you and a friend or a partner or a family member, whoever in your life, want your case heard and tried on OBK Court, understand uh, we can't enforce anything. This isn't real. <laughs> but if you just want to have a good time and get something figured out. Send your case. You got to write it out well because we have to be able to see both sides. And yes. uh, send your case to asktheblackkids at gmail.com. I'm still a little bummed because I feel like the intro we had before was like electric. And this is, I mean, not bad. This is bad. But the other one was just like, <laughs> whoa. And it was on higher cylinders. It was like fresh off the green tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's all good. It's it's, it's all tough good. being Alfred. So <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. This is true. Uh, was there anything else? You had told a great story. Ah, I don't see. I don't want you to like try to retell it, but it was good. Oh yes, I could. The, I could talk ta- to you about it. About it was very simple. It was like I was, was saying how like was. July went by so fast, um, and, and like every facet of my life, I felt like July just like was going, was going, was going, was going, and then it just disappeared, and it's in time for someone's birthday month. Um, 
but like I was, I was giving them one example as like, even at the gym, which, you know, I regularly go to the gym, but it's like, I go for my mobility, not really like trying to have like big gains. This is stuff. where I said, that's not true. <laughs> you go to counteract all the cookies and ice cream. Yes. Which is factually true. I'm more of a cake and ice cream, but yes. Um, that's why I go to the gym and I really go working on core and stuff, but there's like this machine that I like that I try to use on my own. It's like for your abs, right? Um, it's really all body. Like it's the whole core thing really what you're working on, but they call it like, you know, like one of the main focuses, is the abs is what you're, you need your abs to help pull you up. So it's like a little like triangle thing. Right. And so I couldn't, I could never do it. I see people like just doing it so effortlessly. And then I would go in there. I'm like, well, what in the hell are these people? Like, how are they doing it? And then, you know, I, I have a trainer and so she's like, oh no, it makes it easier if you go down lower. So she put it all down like on, fir- on the first one. That didn't help me. <laughs> it didn't help me at all. I still couldn't get to the one. <laughs> so they're just like, okay, let's just do like, you know, let's just start doing like 10. And then I couldn't get past the ones. She's like, okay, let's just start doing five. <laughs> and then I took a while to get to like the five. And then when I was doing the five, she goes, let's just do three sets of five, like for 15. And so um, beginning of July, you know, I was there at that three sets of five. But I struggled. Like, I had to take a break. Like, after the first one, I had to go take a break and come back and do like, another one. And um, this past weekend, I was able to do on two, but, like, the three sets of five, very easy. So she's like, oh, we're going to do, like, you know, four sets of ten. And I was like, mm, no, nah, slow down. Gains. But <laughs> but I'm able to do the three sets of five. So I felt like the beginning of July, that's just one month. And I've been working on this machine probably like four or five months to get to that and then it kind of like you know gym took is life off. yeah she said your muscles are activated <laughs> i was like these muscles muscles <laughs> activate <laughs> these muscles ain't activated but yeah these muscles are activated. <laughs> mm, 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 yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. um but that was just one example of like how the month just really went by so fast it's it's like I don't know. Time is just really speeding up. I made a decision last month. As I often say, I am a therapist. I'm not your therapist. Please find your mental health professional. And I say that and I say that and I say that. But apparently a few episodes ago, I gave my websites and I talked about the coaching that I've been doing, Um, which I did before. But, you know, we always get new fans. So maybe they haven't seen that episode yet. Or maybe it wasn't um, when they needed it. You might have like it may have seen it on a day when somebody really needed it. Sometimes it's like that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You are correct. And I was, I've had, it was five or six people in the last week have told me, oh, you should do that more. So okay. around the end of last month, because I, you know, I've been doing coaching, I've been going into it more, but I don't want to take time away from my therapy and my therapy schedule, my therapy clients. But right. I want to do more coaching, but I'm, I'm dilly dallying, right? Taking too long. So end of last month, I said, you know what? Let me set time on my calendar that's specifically for coaching. And since I've done that, I've signed up like, I think we're at like nine. Awesome. People. That's great, babe. From this month. That's really good. So when I say be intentional. Yeah. Sometimes I say it, but then I have to actually do it too. So I was intentional about my my calendar and like, hey, if you're going to do it, do it. Otherwise, you know, stop talking about it or stop putting this energy into it. And so I set that time aside. Has not diminished therapy at all. I'm still a therapist and I am a relationship coach. Awesome. I'm a budding relationship coach. That's still getting great. Getting my, my beta clients because I need them, them testimonials. I worked with Robert and he was the truth. And uh, yeah, it's I'd say it's going it's going well so far. I definitely need to clean up my sales talk. <laughs> Very much a therapist. You're not Being, a marketer. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Shit, I don't know <laughs> um, but I'll get there. I yeah, have the, you will. I have the systems for doing the coaching. I need to work yeah. on the systems for selling the coaching. Yeah, it's just a process. You get it. Your systems are getting in place. And the reason I've done more coaching, the reason I've gone that direction is one, I've, I've always felt there's a little bit of restriction in therapy. And then two, 
you know, Corona changed everything. Before I used to work with people, we're in the same office, we're in the same room. And then Corona comes and it's all online. So suddenly, because I'm licensed in the state of Florida, I'm working with people from Miami to Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, I remember I had a client a few years ago in Pensacola. And for whatever reason, Pensacola's in a different time zone. So I always remember that. Um, <laughs> it is. They yeah. call that, you know, they call it L.A. Lower Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> I call it F.U. What's that? Fucked up. No, people in Pensacola are cool. I know a lot of people in Pensacola now. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty awesome. I feel you have to say that. No, they're pretty You've awesome. You've been to Pensacola? Huh? Have you been to Pensacola? I haven't yet. I will be soon. I've been to Pensacola one time. Uh, I have to go up pretty soon, and I can just tell you this. Everyone I've you met. You have to go to Pensacola? I do. You have to go? I have to. I have to. I want to reconsider that. To meet some of these great people in person. <laughs> I've met nothing but great people in person. I was in Pensacola for like two days. Uh-huh. And right before we were leaving, it was it was a drumline thing. Everyone went to eat here. Mm-hmm. Not Robert. Robert's got to be different. That's so Robert right. went to go eat here. They're right beside each other, right? Same, like, same parking lot. I walk into this like diner kind of place. Y'all ever actually heard a record stop (laughs) and everyone turns their head (laughs) who told this negro he could like okay that happened to us i told you that that, that, well that happened to me (laughs) by myself in high school yeah you and shouldn't I, have gone you shouldn't I, have, see you shouldn't I, have straight up by yourself i that's, knew the that's vibes the first, that's the first mistake i knew vibes instantly i was like oh they're not in here oh <laughs> i apologize everybody yeah, what you is going on? Up. man <laughs> never again so you enjoy pensacola okay. i am when are you going first i'm probably gonna have to go before then okay yeah so i'll probably have make to go sure again. i get that life insurance set up you're so dramatic all right you're so right, dramatic. Don't worry. I'll make sure I'll do that. Yeah, well, there's been great people. I'm not going to, you know, maybe there's other parts in other areas. Because <laughs> yeah. those same, that same kind of thing mm-hmm. happens right here in Miami. It sure does. It sure does. <laughs> but the but the flavor is a little different in Pensacola. <laughs> Might be. You ever been to Alabama? Huh? You ever been to Alabama? No, I'm not trying to. I've been to Alabama. Okay. Well, I've been to Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay. I've, been, I've, been, I've been to all them places. Okay. Not for a long time, so I, I, won't, I won't pretend to... I think, intimately, I think there's great people everywhere, and I think there's bad people I everywhere. I know there are great people so, everywhere. I'm going to be good. I know there are great people everywhere. I'll be good. We might even have a black, an only black kid in the in the you might. class fan you in might. Alabama. We might even have three. You might. I don't know if I'm going, though. Oh. I'll go to Alabama again one day. Yeah. I mean, I just I don't know. You ever been to Mississippi? No. I'll take you to Mississippi. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not against it, but I'm not like dying to go either. So I think that's how I feel about most places. You're not dying to go most places. Dying to go to? I mean, I don't want you to die. So like, like, like I used to have like this, like, like, oh, I have to go there, and then like I've been to like every so place I've been to those places. Have you been to those? Ooh, I have to go there places. Yeah, one. One. Yeah. One. Yeah. One. Yeah, like, ooh, I have to go. Like, we've gone to some, that's, but this, this is where I was getting to before you There came. are places you have to go and your husband hasn't taken you? No, because you know what happened, though? Oh, this is where I tell you. Like, I'm just, like, you know, I'm around forever. There was, like, the one place that I, I was like, ooh, we have to go there. It was Italy. Like, because I always saw, like, the movies and stuff, the whole Tuscany. And we, like, I just had to, like, go, you know, there. And it was, like, like a movie, right? But then like we've been like we went to Spain. Everywhere we go, it's just like awesome because I'm with you. So then it's like, you know, it's really not the place. So that's I'm like, oh, I'm down to go anywhere. To be fair, in Italy, they actually shot movies in several of the places. I that know. We <laughs> I like, but it was like, it like was everywhere like, we go, you know, they shot a James Bond right it here. It was like, like picturesque. Oh, it was like it was easy going. Someone I realized afterwards tried to you know pickpocket me. <laughs> um it was but it was it was all like it was it was amazing but then like i would say the same thing about south africa i would say the same thing about spain i would say the same thing about san francisco i would say the same thing about new york it's, everywhere we've gone has been like there's only one place that was kind of like yeah I don't, i'm okay if we never go there again st thomas st thomas that was the only place <laughs> 
Wait till I'm school. But it wasn't bad. Like, so I'm saying, it wasn't bad. I, we haven't been anywhere, I don't know anywhere to knock on wood, where it has been like a terrible thing. Yeah. So, you know, we've had some places that were high, like, you know, more action than others. But like, even like our last trip to New York wasn't like how we would normally go to New York because we weren't feeling well. But we had such a great time. Like, I had such a great time. Like, I didn't feel like it like it was dampered at all. It was just different. Like, I had an amazing time. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's no place I'm really dying to go. I mean, dying is, I don't like, I don't like saying. Yeah. There's no place that I'm, like, just, like, dreaming about going. Like, I have to go to. It was cool. Like, you remember I used to be like, oh, we have to go to Greece. And I still want to go to Greece at some point in our life, but I'm not like, oh, you know. Do you want to go to Greece this year? And that's the other thing. Do I really want to go? Every time you ask me, I'm just like, eh. Why yeah. Not? Why don't you? Why don't you give the whole story? <laughs> why don't you do that? You're like always like ready to go places, and I'm. Why like, don't you? Eh. Why don't you tell the people the truth? Tell them the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many times have I tried to take you to Greece? Yeah. You yeah. always tell me, "Oh, I'm gonna go to Paris. I gotta go to Paris." How many times have I been about to hit the button on buying tickets for Paris? And you're like, eh, "Never mind. I don't want to go." We almost went to Paris. I think we would have gone to Paris when we went to Spain oh if I had left my wallet in the taxi. But it was still a great trip. <laughs> we just didn't go to Paris. After that. Yeah. <laughs> I love those pictures from Spain, though. Those pictures yeah. you took. I don't know where you put remember? the pictures. No, no, no. The pictures you took. Remember? You I, mean the pictures you that were on the camera that were with the wallet? Don't do that. Don't do that. You mean the pictures that were on the camera that were in the wallet? Remember the camera I bought you just for that trip? Yep. That's in the back of the box. And you were taking like those wonderful photos. What happened to those photos? They're on the camera that were with the wallet that's in the back of the box. And hopefully someone in Spain had a great time with that camera. Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. Money worked a little different back then. It was pink too. Yeah. I remember it. That's yeah. good. Oh. Just to be clear, I don't know if they understood. What happened to the camera? It got left behind. Well, that sounds... It really sound like it got left. Like the camera, the camera just decided, guys, I'm staying. No, it was with the wallet. Okay, like it. You keep saying it. Mm-hmm. It's like let's take some ownership. I left it. I didn't. I wasn't yeah. trying to not to say it. It yeah. just got left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Such as fun. I as I donate to the I I'm, I donate to the world. But it was still a good trip. But we just didn't go to Paris because after that I was like I'm not going anywhere. I'm ready to go home. I lost my credit card. Lost my ID. I'm ready to go home. This is the first time I'm finding out that you thought we were going to go to Paris during that trip. You want you looked it up. We were going to you said the it was a train or something. It wasn't that expensive because we were already there. Sure, cool. I had even was I had already requested like to take send my vacation time and everything. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, but it didn't. After I lost that thing, I was ready to go home. All right. Yeah. So where are you going next? I don't know. Where in the world is Mrs. The- Sawyer? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like going somewhere this year. I just haven't figured it out. I think sometimes you just got to pop out and show. <laughs> so you should do what I they, probably, I probably do what they did in Coming to America. Spin a globe and just there. Uh, we've done some of that before. Domestically, to, to a different level. Domestically, we're not. We're just not spin a globe. I don't. I don't have spin. I don't have spin. No, a globe we just money. looked up some tickets or, and it was like, oh, these are good. Let's go. But if you want us to get spin the globe money. <laughs> Please follow us at Only Black Kids. That's right. So she can get her glam squad. Yeah, I want a glam squad. Another thing. Yeah. This is the last I'm going to say it. But guys, the intro that we did not record audio for, that I did not record audio for, you would have been like, oh my God, I, I always liked the podcast, but I think now I love the podcast. It, it was really good. It would have done something. It was but I, last I'm going to say it, it's but gone. We I accept it. Yeah, this one, this is good. This is good. This is good. That'll be fine. I'm gonna add that to the list. We gotta get some more green tea. Maybe this is missing. Okay, green tea it is. <laughs> Let's green tea it up. I think so. Some stories, maybe. Okay, I'm doing them all. Oh, I mean, oh, okay. we could start with an Ask the Black <gasps> Kids. Yes, let do an Ask the Black Kids. Please keep sending us your Ask the Black Kids. Ask the Black Kids at gmail.com. Send us your pettiest moments. Send us your microaggressions we have not been getting the microaggressions as much it's been mostly oh, really? relationships oh. however 
Is it okay if I read more than one Ask the Black Kids? Absolutely. Do you remember long, long ago? This is one of our first Ask the Black Kids. It was a young lady in high school, and she was somewhere. I could tell she wasn't in the U.S., and she's talking about how the microaggressions of the teacher. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then she wrote, and I remember I said, I, this is somewhere. She's, she's, I believe she was. Ireland or something. Yes. Yeah. So she wrote again, and she said, yes, well, I'm in Ireland. Yeah. Um, the community I'm in, you know, there's yeah, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of yeah. ah, I remember. Africans. I remember. And, and, that, and she wrote us, and she told us yeah. even worse about yes. the, the school dance. Shout out to you. Yes. Well, recently, someone else from Ireland no. wrote us. Ireland? Saying, I'm also an only black kid in the class. Wow. Or, or at least they were. We got to go to Ireland. I, well, you know, I, told, I showed you that video. I showed you that video. We apparently, have to go to Ireland. Apparently. apparently wow. Apparently your, your, your complexion folk are okay in Ireland. Oh, apparently. Okay. Um, just don't be in high school. I guess. <laughs> so recently, someone. You're else, okay if you know your place. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the world. Someone else from Ireland wrote saying, I can attest to all this. So I'd like to read that letter. Awesome. Ooh. I like an update of an update of an update. I mean, technically not an update. It's a different ah, person. I like it though, but it's kind of like it's like it's part of it's a piece of the story. It's context of Ireland. Yeah. Ireland. So maybe that's your maybe that's your place. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's, that's where the next we one. Go. Ireland. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Sawyer, I have only just discovered your podcast and I am listening every chance I get. So please forgive me if somebody else has responded to your call out for info on Ireland already from the second episode about the Irish Zimbabwean student. As a black Irish 30 something, my understanding is we never had an Irish civil rights movement. We never really needed one until Mm. the mid 90s. There had only ever been a handful of black people in the country. In fact, there was a running joke in my family for a while in the 80s. If you see a black man in Dublin and you're on the north side, it's Phil Linnut. And if you see him on the south side, that'll be Mick. No. No. I'll explain it to her later. Okay. You mentioned the student being in her final year. So, yes, it was prescribed mandatory reading. The teacher reading out loud in class, however, not mandatory. And neither was the massive aggression of staring people in the eye while saying a slur that she knows is offensive or else she wouldn't have asked if it was okay to say it. Mm -hmm. I would ask what kind of power trip this woman is on, but I was once kicked out of class because the teacher was doing the Jane Elliott race lesson, and I asked if I had been put in the corner because I was black. Are you familiar with the Jane Elliott? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. If you are not, uh, you're allowed to pause, but come back. Go on YouTube, look up Jane Elliott. Incredible. Incredible. And she and she still does it. She I've does seen it. I've seen yes. recent ones. Yes. So yes. it's it's they like over decades she's done this experiment. I won't try to explain it, I'll butcher it. Please look at it. It's incredible. Awesome. I was sent outside the room, firmly told off, and when we returned to the classroom, the man child of a teacher announced that I had ruined the lesson and he would not be continuing it or explaining the purpose of it. It wasn't until a year or two ago when I heard about Jane Elliott's original lesson that I realized what had happened. Really loving the podcast. Thank you for the many hours of entertainment. I look forward to while catching up on old episodes. I also love the name. If you hadn't guessed from the rest of my message, I was the only black kid in any class and the school until college. Many thanks. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. But you know what? How terrible. Like, you know what? People don't even realize. So that's, that's, that's the stuff that people don't understand. Like the trauma and the grit it takes like to get through things like that. Yeah. Like she didn't even know any different. Like, like what, like what adult, like what kind of like, exactly. What kind of power trip was he on to like make a kid go through that? Yeah. Like it's so ridiculous, but like, it's like that, that, um, that little pamphlet that my daddy used to tell me about, like how the psychological trauma they would do for slaves mm-hmm. and how it was like, it would like go on through generations. It's like, you know, how certain things they would do and like context was like our code, right? That you had to do to make people feel like lesser than and like to just like, it just, just totally like affects their psyche. Right. And so I, I see like, like at least this person was able to recognize that happened mm-hmm. and point it out and be able to identify and say, oh, wait, 
that was wrong. I shouldn't have felt that way. The only problem mm. is other people feel that way and they may not be able to get that opportunity to, to understand that that was wrong. You know, like that's the part like it just burns me. It gets me so mad. But, you know, um, kudos to them for recognizing that and having that revelation. I'm so excited that we're, we have two fans in Ireland. I know. Yeah. That is awesome. Maybe we do go to Ireland. I don't know. I have to find out more. I don't I know what the cuisine you. is like in Ireland. What's there to eat there? Potatoes? Don't I, well, don't call slaw. They, they eat more than just potatoes. What is over there? I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm don't ask you, me. Ask our classmates. Yes, I want to know what there is to eat in Ireland. Recommendations on where to go. Maybe. Hmm. Shout out Ireland. Shout out Ireland. All right. Awesome. Keep those coming. You know, I see stats for some of the stuff we put out, and the places I the places I always see New York is like our number one hub. Ooh. Which I, I, who knows how that happened? And then South Africa, Woo! and then it's very small. It's not even our top five, but it's consistently there. Like the other ones will change, but what's always there is Nigeria. Oh, we got to get to Nigeria. Nigeria is always there. And I was planning on going to Ghana and Nigeria uh, after our South Africa trip. And then this thing called COVID, COVID happened. Uh, and we have not. We've not. We have not ventured out. Yeah. We've only just started going outside more now. So. I know. We haven't been international anywhere. I mean, apparently we have been international. Oh, we did. Because we got, we got the classmates. Oh, and we did go on a cruise. Yeah, I don't count. Uh, technically counts. So thanks for keeping us international. Yeah. Thanks for the diaspora love. Yes. And we will be back on the continent sooner than we know, although yeah. we have no idea when. You know, I, I just, I, I, that's like really, to me, is like a, a, another piece of that community. I love that. You know, she can totally relate. She's the only black kid in the class. <laughs> that's kind of cool. You know, because sometimes you're like sitting there, you're like, man, this is just me. Like, like I must be like, really. <laughs> yeah. So it's like to have that community that we're OK. No, you're not just crazy one. <laughs> There's others that went through that. And then even if you weren't the only black kid in the class, you probably have an experience that is relatable. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just to just to triple down on it, even if you're not black. Correct. You probably have. Correct. There's been a time when you have felt othered. Even if you were amongst similar yes. phenotype cultures, ethnicity. Yes. I, it's I was been a time. I was actually meeting with someone and, and she's from India. And uh, I wonder if we were outside or something or another. And um she you know, I, I I always I stay in the shade just because I don't like it hot. I don't like the hot, I don't like the heat at all, right? And so she was like, you know, something they were doing an activity and then she was like, What? And the lady says, Oh, because you know this, and she's like I'm not white. I'm from India. Like, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> At the, remember, the first place I worked as a therapist, there was another therapist who was Indian. Mm -hmm. She's Jamaican. Mm -hmm. We worked at a very Miami place, if you will. Yes. But there were other Jamaicans who worked there, uh -huh. but they were black. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, the hierarchy who was very racially motivated, I'm trying to use the PC language, the, the, the hierarchy of this place, which is very... Uh, Not diverse. Not diverse. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. Racist as fuck. Uh, they could never figure out what she was. Because she sounds like them, but she doesn't. She looks like... They yeah. didn't understand. Like, t like that's erasure, right? That like, is because she that couldn't is. be. Like, what are like they based the the ways they tried to find to say what are you? It was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Yet, terribly sad at the same time. It's super sad. It's super sad. So, um, I I I would love for us to even like build on that. Like, we're the only black kids in the class because we're the black ones right in the class. 
but I I just love to hear stories from anyone else too that just just may have been like the only one in the class, not necessarily d- definitively black. I think that's the part where people are classmates come in all, all shapes, all, sizes, colors, all. creeds, yeah, sexualities, abilities, all the things. Like I, I'll tell you something crazy. You're probably like gonna go like, oh, that's not what I was including. Including, but I I never forget. I had this um. This woman that I worked with many years ago, and she told me that she was treated differently because she was the only um, person that had dark brown hair. And at first I was like, um, that's not a thing. It might be, I don't know. <laughs> but, honey, I don't know. I told you about that restaurant I went to in Ohio I City. I don't know. Oh, everyone's blonde and blue. I told you about that restaurant I went to. I have to say, she was the only one, and I, she had a point, and so I was like, you know what? That is, that is, that's a, that's a, that's an only person. It is, it is a true fact. It's just, I think human beings have to recognize that there's biases, and I think they're naturally like that too, right? There's a movie, Pleasantville. Oh, Pleasantville, to, it's with Reese Witherspoon and uh, I believe Tobey Maguire. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it in a long time. Pleasantville, like they're they're living they live in present times. Uh huh. Probably like late nineties, early two thousands. So that's their present time. And uh, no, late nineties, ninety nine. Don't worry about it. Uh, and something happens, and they they get transported to Pleasantville, like an old TV show. Mm-hmm. So now everything's in black and white. Mm-hmm. And something happens, and some people start turning into color, like Technicolor. Okay. And so now the bias was the Technicolors and the black and white. Ah. If everyone was the same race, we would do it on height. If everyone was the same height, we would do it on money. If everyone had the same money, we will always find a thing to differentiate, to divide, to other. It's power. It's power in numbers. That's it is. I you're right. You're right. It's power. I don't think about the power. I think about the fear. I think about the scientific thing of it, right? It's like, okay, well, you're similar to me. I can understand you. I can kind of get your your yays or nays. And you, oh, no, 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 you're an anom- you, I don't understand you. You're different. You must be threat. I kind of feel well, like it's, it's also it's mechanism. also the fear of the unknown. And you're an outsider, and outsiders are bad, right? So I can't trust you. Correct. That's what I'm saying. I think it's also like a, a safety I have read, mechanism. I read it a long time ago. Um, let's say let's say we were doing an only black kids show. Uh huh. Coming soon. Not really, but no. hopefully one day. <laughs> if we were to divide the room and this side is Team Mrs. Sawyer and this time this side is uh, Team Robert, inevitably, when you put people on teams, teams just believe they're better than the other team. Absolutely. For no, no reason no whatsoever. Reason. Right. Well, I'm better and our team has to win. Yeah. There's, so it's the competitive it's, it's a, it's a part. Number of things. It's, the, it's the competitive part. Yes. It's the fear. It's the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I remember when she said that. And, um, you know, I was like, girl, go sit down. Right. And then later on, I was like, you Damn. know, I started you, seeing it. You erased her. You biased well, her. Well, I, 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 I've never said I didn't have biases. Everybody Damn. has biases. Um, I have a bias. But. You want to know my bias? What's your bias? I only like Mrs. Sawyer. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad bias, but um, I remember later on we were somewhere and I think it was like a bunch of their, of her like classmates or something came in or something. And like, even their moms were like different and like, it was like, Oh, oh thank you. Like they were so fake with her. And I was like, Oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> I, I go, I apologize. You were right. You are, you are a different one out of this group because she had like dark brown hair. Like that's really what she had dark brown dark brown eyes and dark brown hair, and like they all had like blonde hair, blue eyes, or green eyes. Not to say anything wrong with blonde hair, blue eyes, but in this group, she was the anomaly. And that's when you taught her, what is it? Bad body bleach butch or something. <laughs> I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. I what it no, I I didn't teach her that. I mean, I, we were we were we were friendly, so I mean, we just laughed about it. Yeah. I got another Ask the Black Kids. All right, let's go. Marriage advice. Hi, I'm a 33-year-old female, and I'm married to a 32-year-old male. We live in Jacksonville, Florida. Hmm. I've been with my husband for about nine years now, and we have been married for almost a year. Back in 2022, my now husband, side chick, brought it to me that she was pregnant by him for the second time. Oh. She said she had just found out about me. 
I stayed, and he said he wouldn't do it again. But he has been very secretive and closed off from me. He doesn't bother or even talk to me. Mm. We live together, and mm. I do everything to get his attention. Wow. Spend time with him, go out, but he would rather be with his friends. A few months back, we found out we were finally pregnant after trying for years, oh. and I could tell he didn't want it or even cared. Unfortunately, we lost our precious baby girl, Aww. and I want to try again, and he doesn't. I'm almost certain that he is cheating on me because when we were sharing locations, he would always be at hotels on the days he was, quote, chilling with his friends. Wow. That's weird, right? A bunch yeah. of men always chilling at a hotel for hours? Yep. I'm talking about four to six hours. We never go out together. We never do romantic things with me. We don't cuddle, and if I say something about it, I'm nagging, and he will do it for about seven days. Then he's back to his game and friends. Hmm. I have nobody I can get advice from. I honestly want to leave because it's very draining and difficult dealing with a person who I feel completely disconnected from. But at the same time, I don't want to leave and start over because my family and friends are all going to judge me and oh, think no. I'm not as good as they are Oh no! because men are always cheating on me or not treating me right. I really want this relationship to work because I need to. I really want this relationship to work. I need it to. I want a family and a husband. I prayed for this life. I need it to look like something's working. Mm. But I can tell my husband no longer wants to do this or care about me. He cares more about his so-called friends than me. I do the most in this relationship. I am the reason we have everything that we have. Mm. Moving from Miami here to Jacksonville to start all over and carrying him on my back, plus still paying most, if not all, the bills. He wants to have a threesome and have some ladies oh, in the bedroom with us word. because it was something that I used to do, but I don't want to anymore. So I know he is out doing these things. My question to you all is, how can I get my husband to do right so we can look better in front of my friends and family? Mm. Mm. How can I get him to love me and care about me mm. more? Mm. I need this marriage to work and last. No. Please help. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That is written to Ask the Black Kids. as written to Mr. and Mrs. Sawyer. So first and foremost, <sighs> sorry about the loss of your child. That's um, that's never a good thing to do. And, ow, oh, my heart goes out for this one, babe. Um, Because, I mean, you know, I always say adults... They decide what's good for them, and that's really what happens for their union, right? But I kind of feel that this person hasn't taken the time to find out what's good for for them, like what's for her. what's good for her. Um, it's too much weight and worry about her friends and family's opinion um, on what's going on with her, and I kind of feel that she just really needs to figure out what she wants it seems like she spelled out like all these things of what she doesn't like from from this marriage because they're married right um but she she realized and recognizes that there's things that she does not like and she does not have to deal with um so my advice it would be to find what you like if this ain't it and if it ain't it I know you're itching to get your 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 your, your opinion in there, but um, I'm not itching. I'm listening to you. This to me is is not. This is this to me. This ends in divorce, and hopefully, you finding yourself and finding something much better. I think this person deserves much better than this. I think any human being deserves much better than this. Like just all around. I mean, we can go into the details about like the threesome and not wanting to do things and just cheating and and not being honest. Those things are just like those are to me. There's there's no room for for any kind of concessions for that. So sorry to say, my advice would be to move on and look on how to better yourself. What would you say, Mr. Sawyer? I'm in line with you. I'm in line with you. I, I agree with you. I think when people say, oh, you can do better or you don't need this, you don't deserve this, they're right, but they, they're missing a key point. Mm -hmm. She knows what's wrong with this relationship. Yes. She, yes. She doesn't know how to fix it. And more importantly, she doesn't even believe he wants to fix it. Correct. But she doesn't know how to leave this relationship. Yeah. And she doesn't know... She doesn't have the support 
of family and friends who are going to help her in that healing and moving on. Mm. She's mm. she's scared about the judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will try to keep this concise. You ask for help, I'll give you some advice and some help. Fuck your family and friends. Yes. They're the ops. Yes. What you're going through, uh, I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna jump overboard with labeling things. Not healthy. Not None. healthy for you whatsoever. Nope. Um I'm not just talking about like the emotional trauma of cheating. If he's gallivanting with numerous women and you guys are trying to have babies. Yeah. Um, what is he bringing home to you? Yeah. Oh, he, he's not terrible. just having kids on you. He's just being like, reckless. That's, a, that's an attempt on your life. That's that's just reckless. With disease. Yes. So you say that you're you're paying for most things. You you understand what's not working in this relationship. I don't yep. I don't need to spell that out for you. It's the fear that you have of moving on. Yeah. You I think it's the fear of being alone. Yeah. It's but the judgment remember, but and listen being to, alone. But listen to what she also said, because men keep on cheating on me. Yeah, she's had it before, so she just thinks that's all she's good for. She's only going to find people that would cheat that's on the her. Norm. And I don't. I that's what I'm saying. Like, no, maybe girl, you just but need if, to. But if life has shown you that, I hear you. I you hear say you. you can say the healthy shit all you want, right? But life has shown her this is what it is. I hear you. Men cheat. I just got to find someone that's going to still have a family with me and mm. cheat. So she's not crazy. Life has proven that lesson. Yeah. Everyone on the internet knows the best thing to do. Yet I'm still gainfully employed. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. I am not judging you. I think it's the fear that you're experiencing mm-hmm. about no one wants to be alone. Very few people want to be alone. That's fair. Yeah. And. If I can't make my marriage work, I've been with him almost a decade, Mm -hmm. but as I would tell many, many people, you're 32. You don't know how young 32 is until you hit 40, 42. (laughs) And then you're not going to know how young 42 is until you hit 52. Yeah. And then, you know, just keep going. Just keep going. If you were 99, I'd be like, all right, maybe let's let's just slow it down with the relationships. You're good. No, no offense to my non-genarians out there. Uh, Although they're not our base. Remember, I see the stats. They're not yeah, okay. our base. So we can okay. diss them. It's cool for now. For now. But we'll clean it up later on. Okay. When we, when we, when we get to the non-genarian base. Um, octogenarians, shout out to you. We have a few. Seriously, we do. <laughs> it's only, You're only old if you feel old, uh, despite what your needs may be telling you at any given time. So it's not too late for you to have a healthy relationship. I say healthy. I don't like to say other words on it because what I find healthy and what you find healthy might be different. Mm -hmm. But we can all come to consensus that my husband cheats on me with multiple women. He spends all his time at hotels. He doesn't really have money for all that. So it's ultimately me paying for him to be able to cheat on me. He doesn't care about me. We can all come to a consensus that that is not healthy. Right. So the first question I would ask you is what does healthy look like for For you? you? Yes. If you are open to your husband having uh, multiple women and children while he is married to you and unengaged with you, I can't tell you that's wrong. Mm-hmm. But you're that's writing your us. That's your decision. That's your decision. Um, but you're writing us. Correct. Saying that that's not you. right. You're so saying then, you don't like that. So if you're saying you don't like that, then that's not that's not healthy for you to. Yeah. So you said that his side chick. So one identified side chick said that she's pregnant again. Again. So. Your husband has children. Yeah. Uh, Again, that just goes to unprotected sex. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, but I, I would look at it. He's probably not really involved in those kids' life. And you want to do that with him? Yeah. Think about the babies. So online, you, you people, get, people get tortured. People get cooked. For being in these kind of situations. But I I, I think the thing that is often ignored is the trauma that people have experienced Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that makes them prime for these experiences. So you know what? As I am coach extraordinaire now, as I'm a relationship coach, and if this story is real, I I think it's real. I think it's real. Uh, Write me. 
You have my email address, mm-hmm. asktheblackkids at gmail.com. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I think you need to talk to a professional. Yeah. Which I know I say all the time. Mm-hmm. But I think you specifically need to be able to say what it is you want and you need the empowerment to admit that it's what you want and to go after what you want. Yeah. I think that I have zero hope for your relationship. I would tell you. I think it's already done. It's just. uh, I don't think it ever began. Yeah, I I don't think so either. I don't tell people get get divorces. I tell people choose what is healthy for you. Your your marriage is not healthy for you. It's Um, not. Let him go be the trash father he wants to be. Let him go be the whore he wants to be. Yeah. And it's time for you to learn how to heal. So write me. Let's. Do an hour. I'm not trying to sell you. I'm not trying to get you into my coaching. Uh, I just want you to have that safe space for. It'll probably be an hour. It might be an hour and a half, two hours. And then I'll give you directions on where you can go work on that with someone uh, that's uh, in your area. I will not, I'm probably not going to be your person, but I know what is needed. Let's spend some time. Let's get you saying some things out loud. And let's get you identifying what is healthy for you. Yeah. Yeah. And get some new friends. Yeah. You know, it's not just, it's sometimes it's our perception of what our friends and family will say. And sometimes it is what they say. So. Yeah. I, th- I think it's know. both. I mean, I think it's both. I mean, like, uh, you know. Other man cheated on you? Yeah. Which, to be fair, you're 32. So nine years ago. Like, what are you, like yeah, it's like all, the whole time. Like, how do you control that, someone from cheating on you? Like, yeah, you can't. You can't, so. you can't stop people from doing that kind of nonsense. So, oh, well, wish you well. I really do. Okay. <laughs> Story time. Story time. Story time. It's excellent. Oh, I know you're going to do a Bill, Bill, and Ted. Bill and Ted. It's not Bill and That's Ted? That's not Bill and Ted. What is that? Wayne's World. Oh, Wayne's World. Mm. <laughs> they just all look alike to you, don't they? No, I just, I, is that? Oh, now I can't even remember who. Tread lightly. I, Jeez. I don't even remember the movies. They came, like, I think I watched them at the same time. That's why. Okay. Bill and Ted predates Wayne's World if we're talking movies. How long though? The first one? Uh-huh. The first one's like 88, I want to say. Possibly. I feel it's like 88. And the second one, Bill and Ted. Ah. I'm not I'm not seeing that one clearly. That might be 91. And the okay. third one came out like 2020, I think. Really? It's kind of trash. Oh, I never saw it. I mean, they're all kind of trash, but the first two I was young and I, I still enjoy them. You ready? Let's go. Emma the asshole for threatening my wife with divorce after she quit her job to be a trad wife. I have heard this story from two other podcasts. We never try to take stories from podcasts. But this one keeps popping up everywhere. So when we go story searching, if I know I've heard it somewhere else, I try not to take it. But this one, ugh. I need I need some guidance from the classmates on this one. This one is that bullshit. <laughs> I haven't heard it in a while though, so please. All right. I don't even know where to begin with this. Me, 34 male, and my wife, 33 female, have two kids together, 11 male and 9 female. Me and my wife have been together for 12 years and married for 8. Around a year ago, I noticed my wife increasingly sending me these trad wife or traditional housewife TikToks. I have nothing against the type of relationship, but I don't think it makes sense for our current family situation. I do earn quite a bit of more than my wife and enough to sustain our family on my own, but I don't see the need to do so. I work 80% and my wife 50%. And besides Wednesdays, where the both of us are working, either one of us is always home for our kids. I could work 100% and let my wife be a stay-at-home mom, but again, Both my kids are attending school, and in my mind, there's no need for my wife to be home 24-7. She got increasingly pushy about it over the past two months, and again, I just kept telling her that there wasn't a need for that, and if we decide to go down that route, what would she be doing during the hours my kids attended school? I know damn well our house doesn't need to be clean for six hours a day. 
She would constantly try to butter me up with, you would have dinner ready every day when you came home for work and something about unlimited blowjobs or some BS like that. Again, in the nicest way possible, I remind her that our kids weren't toddlers and our current work life schedule allowed us to function perfectly fine. Mm. We got into a pretty heated argument two weeks ago and about it. And my wife completely stopped having sex with me to show me what I would be missing out on. Transactional. She's basically been treating me like a roommate since. I thought she would get over it and this was just a phase, but God was I wrong. I came home from work yesterday and saw a bunch of presents on the dining room table. Mm. At first, I thought they were all for me since my birthday was in a week, but then I saw the labels on them addressed to my wife. I read one of the letters attached to one of the presents. The last sentence on it literally said, it was such a pleasure to work alongside you and I wish you all the best moving forward. I thought this was some sick prank. A few minutes later, my wife just casually strolled into the living room acting like nothing was wrong. I guess she saw my mad expression and had the audacity to tell me, you'll get over it. I just lost it. I just left without saying another word and went to my parents' house. I feel absolutely disrespected. Why the fuck would my wife think it is okay to just quit her job without telling me and just expect me to be fine with it? My wife has been bombarding me with texts and calls demanding to know where I am and that the kids miss me. I just told her to go find a lawyer and that I was done with her and then proceeded to block her. My son just sent me a voicemail crying and asking why I was divorcing mom and if I was leaving the family and I guess that kind of broke my heart. I haven't responded and honestly don't know what to say to him. My mother-in-law has also been demanding that I return home and apologize to my wife. My parents also seem to be siding with wife since they are traditional Muslims. My mom also used to be a stay-at-home mom. I feel like I'm wrong for immediately jumping into divorce without hearing her out. And besides the whole job drama, I love my wife too much for this to be the end of our otherwise perfect marriage. But on the other hand, I feel like I've lost complete trust in her. Should I just swallow my pride and let my wife stay at home for now on? Or should I follow through and divorce her? How should I navigate the situation? Am I the asshole here? That's deep. It's nasty work. That's insane it's nasty work that's insane that's what they out here doing that's crazy she watches a lot of tiktok that's insane how the heck jeepers oh no Mm-mm. 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 there's so many things going through my head right now i'm gonna let you go since no, i read the story i, I want to hear you you want to hear me? Yeah. That's some bullshit. That's what I want. That, 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 that's it. How in the world? First of all, just because you say you, you see something on here and you say you like it. That's, that's, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that's a decision for the marriage. That's a, you, that's, that's a, we got to talk about this thing. Right. Mm-hmm. He asked her, what you going to be doing all that time? I think that's a healthy question to ask mm-hmm. he wasn't belittling it at first even though he felt you know you're gonna be cleaning the house for no six hours a day is what you're gonna do and she talked about oh you can have your, your dinner be made and unlimited blowjobs like what kind of shit is that he eats now yeah, yeah what is that no so so you know like that that to me is like whatever but the part that gets me so then she gets into attitude and then she'd like just say okay oh, we're not having sex like that's kind of like what how do you how do you decide that like, what part of the marriage, there's two people here to make a decision, does that come from? Like, so, just to clarify, if you were very upset with me, you would definitely have sex with me. Maybe not that same day. Oh, like the next day. Maybe. Well, that's like punishing me, too. Oh, so I can still serve this. <laughs> I can scram. I can scram for 25, 30 minutes. Anyhow, so th- th- there's that, and then she just ups and do it, does it? So like, it's not it's not just that too. It's like, so did she just quit from one day to the next? Not if there was like a party and presents and like you know they knew to get her gifts. So that means that mm-hmm. she made a decision. She told the off of the workplace, but didn't tell her husband. Told everybody. So that means her the whole time that she's out telling them that her last day, he has no clue. So she's lying. 
just walk around the house just lying. That's deceitful. Lying and not having sex with him. Like, what kind of crap is that? And then he reacts. I'm not saying yes that he act, he reacted the proper way, but what's the proper way to react? I know to? there is no proper way. He reacts. Why don't we do this? Why don't you do that, and we'll find out the proper way, or better I, yet, I'll do it. No, and we'll find out. The, oh, it's no, not, no, okay. No, we'll, no, what's the proper way to react? No, to no, 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 no. Well, one, I never see either one of us like leaving the house, <laughs> like, and and not coming back. But that's. He might blow off some steam and come back, but like he's looking to not. How long come was back. he gone? I, it sounds like it sounds like the same day. I'm not sure, but anyhow, she uses the kids like manipulate the kids. How she get the kids involved? Talking about daddy divorcing, like leaving voicemails. Like what? So not only have you been deceitful and just like a blatant like that's just a terrible, like a bad human. You've now gotten the kids involved? Like, that's terrible. I don't even know how you come back to that. I could never trust her. Like, that's terrible. I don't I don't think, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think he's the asshole. No, he's not the asshole. But there's a lot of if he wants to pursue because he says he loves his wife and and you know, I don't know all that there is to context of this relationship. There's a lot to be mended. That's not a you one. You can't mend that shit. You I don't think so. For me, it could never you can't be mend mended. That shit. Not for me. You can't mend that shit at all. Not for but me. But there, there are other things at play that I, I think affect this story. That if you're not tapped into that, you might misunderstand. What is so that? I'm not the expert. But as I have a good buddy, a new buddy, who is Muslim, Mm -hmm. a lot of this falls in line, or at least from his culture, Mm -hmm. his religion, Mm -hmm. his family, Mm -hmm. he has been the asshole. As I have been taught more when I I speak with my buddy, um, you know, he's he's not married, he's a younger guy, but he, he can't have his wife work. That's against his religion. No, that's fair. So the question, the biggest question I would have is, what religion is this wife that she was ever working? Right. Don't 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 be super liberal, and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm done working. I'm super orthodox. Like that's 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 sketchy. Um, but I think if you listen, her mother and his parents are both telling him, "What are you doing? Like you know, yeah, this is okay. You can make it work." So I, I think there's a reason. There's a little bit more. That's the context I think we might not really have in this part. So even 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 that, honey, and I'm hearing you out. Even if that comes into oh, play, wait, wait, I'm not. Oh wait, 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 wait. I know. I think you misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm saying that's the context we don't have. Oh. Regardless of that. Okay. Okay. This marriage is cooked. Yeah. Because yeah. she's selfish AF. Yeah. That's she needs this to be by This marriage herself. is cooked. She needs to be by herself. Not only is it cooked, she's trash. Yes, trash. Because the manipulation completely is insane. Completely. And then, by the way, you'll get over it. If you don't, what? Yeah, yeah. That's what? terrible. That's terrible. That's that's I I don't even I don't even know like. Hey, when they be in the comments talking about this, is what women do, this is what women do. They're wrong. No, that's wrong. They're wrong. No. Ain't nobody doing that. But when you have this kind of shit, audio oh, meals. Like, come on. Come on. She is like selfish isn't the word. No, she's a bad human. She's next level with she it. She is a bad human. There's no like what this isn't a marriage. This I'm is telling a dictatorship. you. Yes. I and- said I'm not doing it anymore. I bet you, I bet you he didn't get a blowjob that night. Exactly. He came home, was dinner ready? Exactly. You lying mo- See? No. See? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's, but, that, like I said, that's still a conversation. They had a conversation about it. They didn't come to an arrangement. Like They didn't come to an agreement. So then, in in a relationship, this is a marriage, with kids even, I say uh, chicken... 
tonight. You say fish. We cannot come to consensus. How, how do you solve that? I'm just saying, you know, they have a difference of opinion. She says, I don't need to, I don't need to work anymore. You can do it. And he says, no, like I still, I wouldn't have time for the kids. I'd still, how do you, how do you do that? When an immovable object meets an immovable force, what do you do? Somebody has to be the adult to come up with the plan. That's amicable for both sides. Someone has to be the adult. Yeah. That's hurtful language. You're saying they're immature. The person that doesn't immediately acquiesce is immature. It's a child. Yes. No. No, the person. So you're. So you're. No, so then the you're off person, the child. I'm saying the, the the other person is the child. The person that doesn't acquiesce. No, the person that 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 won't move either way. That means that's. Okay. Wow. That's what I meant. That's what I said. Okay. That person is a child. So the second, the second that we disagree, mm-hmm. I say chicken. You say fish. Mm-hmm. I just say fish. You're a child. No. Th- that okay. You said that you can't move past it. Okay. No, we argue about it for a week. We don't eat for a week. Uh, that's never happened. We don't eat for a week because it, we cannot. Because we're just going to have both. We cannot come to the. We cannot come to. A, we're just going to have both. It's it's an example, honey. I hear you. We cannot come to an agreement. So after after a week, I say fine. We will have your fish. Because you're a child. That's healthy. No, that's not healthy. Okay, so then what you just said. Well, you got to figure out some kind of plan. Okay, how? I don't know. It depends on the situation. Here's the situation. I don't want to work anymore. Your salary is more than enough. We'll be fine. And your dinner will be ready and unlimited scramming. So, I'm going to stop. That doesn't work for me. You'll get over it. No, I won't. Okay, so now what? Right now we're both children. Yeah. We don't agree. So what's what no, the No, that's what I'm saying. The, the necessity to label it, well, you're a child if you disagree with me. Well, that's No, it's a child that can't get work to come up with a solution. Okay, well, you haven't come up with a solution, so you're a child. Well, maybe, maybe you can work less. No, I can't work at all. Why can't you work at all? Because I need to take care of the house. The house don't take that much to take care of. Well, I, 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 I the work stresses me and my mental health. Okay, is, so maybe there's something else you could do. What, what else you want to do? I would need to take like two years to be able to figure out what I can do. That doesn't. I, need, I just need. I need to find myself. That doesn't. And I need that to doesn't, heal. That doesn't. That doesn't work for me. You'll be okay. No, I won't. You're being a child. Yeah, I am. Where does it One go? name company, yeah. Where does it go? Oh, oh, see, now, now, here, now we both change. here's the name calling, we both slip talk. You see, <laughs> so what happens? <laughs> that, that to me is not a couple working on it. This is the reality of oh, relationship. Then, then we see, need to, because we, you're in a relationship, we need to go get somebody else then because this you're we'll in have to a relationship this out. with someone that seeks compromise and growth. You're in a marriage. Because I tell you, and I have always said, and you say this too, I'm not saying it's my thing. Uh But in our marriage, we say, if you win, I win. If I win, you win. Yes. But that does not mean we always agree. No, we don't always agree. I'd say we rarely agree. Uh, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But there is an, an allegiance to a greater good and an understanding that our union is more important than any Absolutely. single disagreement. Absolutely. You're coming from a privileged place I guess so. of being with a real one. Okay? I guess so. I guess That's so. not I guess how so. relationships go. I guess go. so. I guess so. And, and you know you, what? And you the same. I won't even say that's you being privileged. My parents set a wonderful example of working together. Yeah. Of being locked in, and when you are locked in with someone, you can live a wonderful life. Agree. So that is the norm to me. That whole going against someone and all that shit—that's that's like that's kind of foreign to me. Like we have to figure this out because. But some people, I would bet, I would bet most people are not like that. You, you, you drive. You're on the turnpike. You're on the ninety-five. You see how if everyone would just let one, one person, person in, in, traffic yes. would 
There'd still be traffic, but it would flow. Yes. But no, no one's giving one the middle finger that. and cutting off. No. Either because this person me, doesn't want to let you in, me, me, or this me. person and the one behind all three cars want to go in. It's because all it's of that. all about yeah. me. Yeah. Now imagine that mindset in a marriage. I hear you. I told you I'm gainfully you. employed. I hear you. I hear you. Because not everyone knows how to do what they need to do. And for me to say what they need to do, I can say the shit easy. But they actually do the work. Oh, my good. The work, the work is hard. Because I could show you where neither of them are wrong. So, I could show you where they're both wrong. So, babe, I think I want to be a stay-at-home stay, stay wife. Okay. You good with that? Top. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> that face means something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with it. I'm cool that with means it. it comes with some concessions. <laughs> Fuck yeah, what you mean? Shit gonna be different. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. <laughs> What's gonna be different? You wanna hold uh, you don't want them to know the whole list. This is gonna be it's gonna be some changes. It's cool. Let me know. <laughs> Anytime you want. You ain't got to worry about that. I, I'm, I'm not worried. Okay. Anytime you want. <laughs> Anytime you want. Oh, boy. One more thing, though, because I did see that story on other, on other uh, um, podcasts. Uh-huh. Well, not podcasts, like, you know, TikToks. Uh-huh. The comments on the, the first time I saw it, the comments were insane. Hmm. Oh, my God. Predominantly no. female comments you know i normally don't read the comments and they i only read the comments that's why why am i even on social media it's only about the comments i don't even care about the content i it's the comments for me uh leave a comment on our youtube and on our spotify the comments were mostly oh she was probably stressed and she has been telling him and he's mm-hmm. not paying attention there's this thing um you kind of struggle with it too called accountability it did not exist in these comments He's wrong because she's stressed and like no one in the comments said, but what if he's stressed? Yeah. Because they don't care. I don't feel all relationships are cooked. I don't feel one gender is cooked. Yeah. But there's a lot of people out there who are cooked. In our next story. You ready for the next one? Bring it on. I'm going to go a little a little softer here. Am I the asshole for going to the police immediately when I found out my parents took out debt in my name? Hell no. <laughs> Don't play that shit. Don't play that shit either. My parents took out credit cards and loans in my name. It was fine when they were paying the bills, but they got behind. I don't have a key to the mailbox, so I never saw the bills or anything. I just finished my third year of university and I was going to move out. That will require me to get a credit check and stuff. My parents freaked out and forbid me from moving out. They said it was stupid and that I would waste money on moving out when I could save money living at home. They don't like my boyfriend, so I thought that was the issue. But nope, I was wrong. Long story short, I'm about $60,000 in debt because of them. I cannot afford to pay that off. I I told them that they needed to clear the debt immediately and change the house rules so my boyfriend could spend the night. (laughs) They said that they didn't have the money to pay the debt and that I could not strong arm them into changing the rules of their house. I called my auntie and asked her if I could please come stay with her for a bit. She let me and asked me a lot of questions. She then showed me a dozen Reddit posts about parents screwing up their kids' future and kids allowing it. I went to the police and reported it. She said, not me. My parents got arrested and charged. They are furious with me. I know they didn't spend the money on me. I do not know what they spent it on. I don't care. I feel bad for them, but I'm not letting them fuck up my future. Am I the asshole? I got a homeboy, right? This This is like his real life. Yeah. I got some clients, right? That's their real life. Yeah. I got some clients that got like 30 grand on the credit cards. Yeah. And you know what? 
to the families that are doing it out of necessity. You don't know how you're going to eat. You got to yeah. do this. I understand, but you still got to figure something out. Yeah. That's not, that's not a final solution. It's going to just keep but, getting dicker in the hole. But to the families that do it so they can go to Disney World this year. Yep, I get that G-Wagon. But, but but your youngest kid is like 23. Mm-hmm. So the family's doing it so you can go on, so you can both get that laundry and dryer and, and that washer and dryer and yep. that vacation. Man, fuck y'all, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't even understand how much you're ruining your child's life. Yeah, because it's going to take forever. 60 bands? Forever for her to get her credit back 60 up. 60 bands? Yes. Sixty thousand dollars. She ain't got no job. She's in university. Sixty thousand. So let's because we know they don't got it. So you know she got some school debt too, unless she got full scholarships. Yeah. And even full scholarships, you still gonna have some. But 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 that's not six. You know that's not sixty thousand. No, it's not sixty thousand. Sixty thousand plus interest. Yeah. By the time she paid it off, she's gonna pay like because they got behind. Oh yeah. So she got penalties. Oh yeah. So it's like not even the amount of debt. She's not a good bill payee. So she's got it amount affect, of debt it, it, plus she's affects, bad at paying debt. It affects her, her credit for the foreseeable future. Yes. And should anything happen to her? Should she having a medical issue? Yes. Or anything where that would get into an, a, a, her own debt? She's cooked. Yes. That's crazy. Like Crazy. But is she the My asshole for calling the, the police? My homeboy would never call the cops on his mom. I know. And I don't think that that's a, that's a bad thing for him. That's what he decides to do. That's his decision. But I don't think she's the asshole for calling the cops. To me, it's fool me once. That's egregious. Fool I, are me you twice. Me? No, that's, that's that shit. That's that bullshit. $60,000. That's that bullshit. Yeah, for sure. No. Should she she gave him opportunity. She gave him opportunity. It's crazy how they said, you can't strong on her. Us in our house, she's like, no, 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 this is our shit now. All right, <laughs> I put in on this. Don't, don't tell me I don't pay no bills around here. I Ooh, paid the bills. I'm paying something. Yeah, no, I, I, I've talked, I've talked to many people like that. Like I'm telling you, you don't understand. Like when your parents set you up for a better life, and I'll be, I'll be very transparent. That's the word they use. It's not like I, ain't, I don't come from money, so my parents didn't set me up with money. I ain't, I ain't had no money. No. But just as far as like discipline. Foresight, yeah. Discernment, yeah. That's what I mean when my parents set me up for for a better life. Yeah. Um, you know, I had school loans. I had to, I had to get school loans. That's how I could go to school. But shit, I ain't had I ain't had no fucking you know what I mean, G wagon type shit on my credit or whatnot. I ain't had no fucking. Oh, there's actually an apartment that you didn't know you had. Like, uh, that's crazy. You've been paying a light bill since ten years before that's you were born. Crazy. Like, no, nah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Man. And then what they argue, because I saw a TikTok like this too. What they argue is, but I'm your I'm your dad. I'm your mom. Like and like you, you clearly know. don't have my best interests in mind. They they don't know how to manage money. Correct. And so they just wanted to use a little leeway of the kid. Man, so it's a lot of it's a lot of so it's a lot of kids under 10 that got credit cards. Correct. So, so what I'm saying is I, I'm not it. judging. I'm not judging that, in, like you said in the beginning, your disclaimer, because I think some people. Oh, I'm I'm judging though. I'm judging. Some people, I think, some people are in circumstances where they just need the credit. I think that there's people who actually pay but, the thing. But you know, you know why I'm judging them? Why? You knew they were fugazi because they didn't want her to know. Oh no, no, you can't that's, move out. That's that's you the can't part. move out because like, they know there's a, she's going to find was, out. There was already a break in trust. When they didn't tell, like, they didn't, like, when she said that, like, that was a moment to, okay, let's have a sit down here. There's something you need to know about, right? There was an opportunity for them to come out with it. She had to find out. Like, that is. They fucked around and she found out. Yes. That's terrible. They broke the trust. They had an opportunity to to work through that. And she called a Jake. And that's how it goes. Yep. That's how it is. They, and Auntie they, was like, oh, they committed a crime. Auntie was like, come on over. Let me show you something. <laughs> they stole her identity. That's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. That's terrible. So I don't think she's, I, I don't know if I call the cops. My parents would never do that. 
I mean, that's that's the real truth for me. Yeah, but my but, would but never do a that. lot of parents would. I would I would call the cops though. If I did that. But my parents would never do that. And sixty thousand dollars don't sound like no emergency. No, nah, sixty thousand dollars. You was tricking off. Yes, yeah, you're tricking 000. off for sure. Like and he got behind, so that sounds like a, a bunch of things on top of it. She said credit cards and loans, so it wasn't like a one time thing. Yeah, like I wasn't. I was, and we were in a bad spot. We just needed, you know, a little help. It, it doesn't sound like anything like that. Everybody has a bad time at a certain correct. Point. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so we're, we're, no, no one's immune to that. So I, w- that's I wouldn't what I'm even. Saying. I wouldn't even judge so much. But then this person's older, let's say it was fairly recent, like you you could even still tell them, like, look, we're gonna do this. Mm-hmm. Here's the plan. Yep. But that's but that's what I mean when I talk about discernment. Yep. That's what like the importance of strategy in life, the important like sometimes, you know, I I help people with strategy in their life. And then I have to figure something out for myself. And it's like, oh, wait, stop. And I and unfortunately, maybe that's privilege that I can find stillness in my life to create the strategy. But these motherfuckers had no plan, bro. Like, how are you going to get out of it? If you built up 60 bands, on, because let's not even talk about their debt. Correct. Their their credit's already cooked. So they said, well, you know what, let's, exactly. let's put a little more over here. Exactly. So that means how are you going to do this? Exactly. You're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're no. robbing your daughter. Correct. So, nah, that, that, um, That's terrible. Those are bad humans. Asshole. Bad humans, not the asshole. I th- and I, they thought it would be okay because, well, but I'm your parents. So. Yeah. And you can't change the rules of this house. <laughs> Shit. I would have I recorded a movie with my boyfriend that night. Oh, God. Like, for real. <laughs> I would have, I bet my parents know his name. Like, for <laughs> sure. Wow. Oh, boy. That's crazy. They would have woke up. He would have been in the kitchen. Hey, Susan. Like, <laughs> You might want to get some milk. <laughs> hey, Peter, you got can I, can I drink that water, man? I am dehydrated. Yo, daughter, Shush. she put it on it. <laughs> well, I'm tired. Well, I'm about to, I need that Gatorade. What y'all got? <laughs> I was gonna do like one little like revenge thing that I found that I liked. Okay. Okay. So here it is. Told a family that stole my water bottle that I had an STI. <laughs> okay. I, 22 female, work at an amusement park doing the summer holidays to make some extra cash on the side. My job role involves checking people's tickets, placing them into the ride, checking some safety restraints, and watching over the ride in case of an emergency. While I was checking safety restraints, I noticed that one of the customers had stolen my water bottle. The man stole my water bottle and passed it to his wife, who then gave it to their child. I briefly noticed it happened out of the corner of my eye. I don't know what came over me. I guess I was just uh, tired due to having to deal with countless tired, exhausted, and cranky guests. And I thought that the family needed to learn a lesson to not steal people's water bottle. I walked up to the man and I told them that he shouldn't have stolen it. He looked panicked and apologized and asked if I wanted it back. I declined. And I said that for his information, I have mouth herpes before showing him a mouth ulcer I had, not from herpes, but from accidentally biting my mouth while eating. He looked panicked and he then told his wife who broke down sobbing and she called me an asshole while telling my friends and family about this. They all seemed rather split. Some of my friends thought it was a really funny prank to pull, while others in my family think that while the family was in the wrong to steal my property in broad daylight, I shouldn't have given the family such a scare from a serious disease. (laughs) I think that is hilarious. (laughs) But how nasty are people to take someone's water bottle and drink out of it? That is disgusting. People are disgusting. That is so gross. Gross. Oh my god. Like, I, if I, you know, one time I bought water, and you know how the safety, like I went to open it, it didn't like crack. I returned it. I'm like, I don't think this water. I think this water bottle was already open. As would I. I, I don't want it. <laughs> and he's like, how would you? And I'm like, I didn't hear it break. I want another one. I don't want this one. That's from like an actual water bottle. Like, no, this is a reusable water bottle. How gross. That's disgusting. So basically, they were disgusted by this person saying they had the STI. 
And yeah. then they looked at this person like they were just disgusting and toxic. And there's like so many people talking about it. And like she had to like talk about like um like all these questions. She responds to it. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Like people are like, well, how do you know it was yours? They stole it. <laughs> like, um, but you did have something in your mouth and this is on stuff. the internet? Yes. Everybody wants someone else to have Correct. accountability. Correct. And it's never the person that needs to have accountability. <laughs> did you tell them that you were lying? I hope you went back and told them you were lying. Like, why? Fuck them people. Don't tell them. And shit. then she called her an asshole for what? Why would the mom call her an asshole? Y'all the one stole my water bottle. Because why are you getting in the way of us doing whatever we want? It's the entitlement. And then people are like, well, why didn't you want it back? Why would I ever want that back? Like, people are nasty. They have the cooties. I don't want their cooties. <laughs> so then so this was the only the thing that I forgot. It was like, while you don't actually have herpes, you do have an open sore in your mouth. And they chose to drink out the water bottle. You weren't wrong to put them in their place. It's disgusting that they gave an abandoned water bottle to their kid. <laughs> that person calls it disgusting. <laughs> I call it toxic. Oh, that's hilarious. That's funny. It's it's toxic. <laughs> <laughs> that's you don't think that level of of entitlement, you don't think that's toxic? That's very toxic. I find it to be toxic. Like? Toxic confessions. <laughs> you got one? I was played by a short, squat, traveling preacher with childbearing hips, and I'm so angry at myself. Mm. Preacher man was the guest pastor at our church, and I knew he wouldn't be in town for long. Preacher man said he could bring me closer to God oh. if I allowed myself to be vulnerable with him. And I did. Oh. I told him about my upbringing, my selfish teen mom, and my need to be accepted by any father figure I could find. Hmm. I got vulnerable with him at every other motel and even the Piggly Wiggly parking lot. What? You know what happened? Me. I'm pregnant. Preacher man. That's a gift from God. Embrace oh. the miracle of life. Damn. I've offered to join him on his travels, but he refused. I don't want to expose him because I'm sure I'm not the only woman he touched at church. How do I make him return to me and take responsibility for our little miracle? Help. What? She, she, wait, she said that he, she's not she the only should, one. She should pray on it. <laughs> <laughs> she should pray on it. That's, that's all I can tell you. Let go a, and let go. That's, that's, that's a good response, honey. Yeah, that's all I, I'm, I, guys. I like that. I'm good guys, with that one. I'm guys, good with that one. We're pray regular on people, it. all right? <laughs> I say I'm a therapist. Just because I'm a therapist doesn't mean I can't acknowledge that that's Fucking crazy. <laughs> okay. Like, like I, guys, guys, I have empathy. I promise you I have empathy. But come on now. That's hilarious. Come on. Come on. What am I supposed to say? That's hilarious. Oh, I got it. I got another one. Okay. I took my girlfriend's car to pick up the birthday cake for her son's party. The bakery is near another female's house, so I made an extra stop to see her. Oh, wow. I was trying to go up to her apartment, but she came down with a hotel key. So we went to the hotel to chill. She rented the room for her hair braiding clients. We hooked up and returned to the car. While backing out of the parking spot, my girlfriend emerged from the back seat and held a water pistol to the back of my head. Get out of my car. Next time I'll have my lead in my strap, not water. <gasps> girlfriend tracked her car and used her spare fob to hide in it. The incident was unsettling because I could envision my girlfriend holding me at gunpoint. I want to leave her, but I want to get out of the relationship alive. Advice? <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, throughout this throughout this toxic confession. Oh boy. You referred to her as your girlfriend. Yeah. She's not. She's a previous girlfriend. <laughs> and she's now the person you need to get the restraining order on. Mm. Uh and you don't even really have grounds because she held a water gun. Yeah. Mm. You're pretty much just getting chumped. Yeah. And leave, bro. Like, what, yeah. do, you, what do you mean? Yeah. Just like, what? No. No, 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 no. Dirty game. I enjoy reading the toxic confessions. <laughs> I never have more for the toxic confessions. Like, nope. you bring the trauma onto yourself. Stop doing that. 
choose health. I, I'm, we're sending you healing energy. Healing energy. That's like, you know how people be like, God bless, but they're like really saying fuck you. Yes. That's at this point, it's like I don't know which one is healing energy, bro. There healing you go. energy. I don't. I like that one. Healing energy. What's the moral of today? I know my moral. Make sure the damn audio is recording. <laughs> I'm, it's still in my head. Like God. I know you can't let it go. Uh, to I and I just want to say. I effused such love and praise upon my wife that was real. And you I'm did. just happy that even though the people don't know, it doesn't matter if the people know. I know. You know. I know, my love. That's how I feel. Yes. Damn, that shit was good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's my moral. What's your moral? I still like doing this. With start, you. start checking your credit score the second you can. Oh, oh yeah, you better do that. That's crazy. <laughs> you still like doing this with me? I still enjoy doing this with you. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't worried until you said it. Thanks. <laughs> 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 you right. shouldn't be worried. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, I tell you if I didn't like it. Okay. Yeah. Bam squad on the way. Woohoo! Which they won't. They're not gonna get the context of that. So, in closing, the moral is, I like a glam squad. I wouldn't have a glam squad all the time because I don't want people in my house. But I wouldn't be opposed to going to a studio to do this every once in a while. And when I did get there, there was a glam squad. I think I would like that. Just like a couple of times. I don't think I would like it all the time. I don't really like makeup is this you closing out the show? I'm closing out the store. I'm closing out the show. Are you? So. Are you stepping into your greatness? So. (laughs) Are you no longer dimming your light? This is what we all want. I never dim my light, my dear. It's true. (laughs) Are you allowing your light to shine even brighter? I am. This is what the peep. I told you you are the star of this show. But I'm going to. I, my mind is is a scatter plot. I can't always remember everything for closing, so I'm going to need some assistance to make sure I get. I'm it here to assist. There we go. I'm here to assist. So, in order for me to get my glam squad, I need you to comment, give the five stars or whatever that is, someplace that's Spotify and YouTube, Apple, Apple too, and okay. Apple too. Okay. And I need you to follow us everywhere and tune in. Okay. Okay. That's on Instagram. <laughs> this is just meant to be like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can still hear you. Keep going. Keep going. Finish up. Finish up. Finish up. Finish up. Um, Instagram, TikTok, and send all of your questions, microaggressions to Ask the Black Kids. And that's it. Bye bye.